Hey guys, DB Raw here, and once again, please excuse my voice. I'll try hanging there as best I can. And welcome to What If Rabbits Turn Good? I know, shocker, right? No, I mean the fact that I haven't done uh, What If Rabbits Turn Good. What if yet, yet? Not the fact that, um, that it would be so hard to believe of a character such as Raditz turning good. Nah, just the fact that DB Roy hasn't done a what if Raditz turned good scenario yet. And well, finally, we are getting one. And this video is proudly brought to you by dbriportal.com, my official website. Please um, have fun, check it out, check out the um, different content on there. There's web comics on there. Um, we're slowly but surely moving my what if content over there, especially the new stuff, plus more. Alright, now our story begins right at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. Starts off exactly like it does in the original. Raditz shows up on Earth. And he is in search of someone. A being known as Kakarot. But of course, I think because of his tail, I think it's a pretty dead giveaway who he's looking for. Goku, unaware of it has no idea that this space pirate is looking for him. Well, much like the original, Raditz runs into Piccolo, and eventually, before he could finish off and kill Piccolo, he, de he detects another power level slightly higher than Piccolo's, and, well, he goes after that power level instead. And it turns out to be exactly who he's looking for. His long-lost little brother, Kakarot. And pretty much everything leading to the Goku Piccolo team up to rescue Gohan, whom Raditz kidnaps in trying to convince Goku to join him. Well... Let's just say that fight goes pretty much the same as it does in the original story. The only huge difference is that when Goku has Raditz in that full Nelson, Raditz simply is able to um, fly away, but at the same time, kicks his brother out of the way of the blast too. You see, something happened during those pivotal moments. He saw his brother, Kakarot, was seriously willing to kill him and himself in order to stop him, to defend their planet, to rescue Gohan, and um, very unsaiyan like behavior. But at the same time, when Raditz was able to free himself in this timeline, he couldn't simply let Piccolo's death beam be the end of his little brother. After all, he would be breaking a promise that he made to his mother long ago to look out for his little brother. And well, by kicking him out the way, Raditz does show that there is potential for there to be good in him and... 
pretty much after that, you might be thinking, oh, well, then Raditz is just going to finish them off if he gets free. Um, no. When he was actually talking about leaving the planet and not coming back, when Goku had him in the full Nelson, Raditz was actually serious. He was, he was in, oh my god, I'm about to die in this, I'm getting out of here first chance I get. He was in that mode, and pretty much still is. He pretty much flees, while Goku, who isn't dead in this timeline, thanks for, thanks to Raditz's subtle kick that got him out of the Piccolo's range, and needless to say, Nappa and Vegeta, who are listening into this whole ordeal on the Scouter, they're not happy with Raditz. They're not happy with Raditz at all. He let a bunch of weaklings get the better of him, and he ran away. There was no redemption in the um for Raditz with his former comrades. And so, he has been warned that um, Nappa and Vegeta are on their way. They are going to finish what Raditz had started. And while they're at it, they're going to take out Raditz for being a weakling, being cowardly. Now, this, of course, has Raditz all panicked. His own teammates that, strangely, he may have considered his friends, are now coming to Earth to kill him, for starters, and wipe out the vermin that he couldn't. And maybe take the kid with him. And, um, well, after... A few weeks of um, wandering around on his own, he's come to the realization that this is the first time he's really felt free of Nappa and Vegeta, the constant criticisms, all of that. Free to train on his own, um, or in his own way, however he wants to. Perhaps, if he can actually get these earthlings on board, then perhaps they do have a chance of o overpowering Nappa and the Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta. And well, for the last few weeks, Goku, again, still alive, has been back home with his kid and, um, well, Piccolo, he's nearby, but he hasn't chosen to attack Goku and try to kill him with a special beam cannon yet. He's just sort of lurking by, not quite fully deciding what it is he wants to to do, and remember, they're not aware of the other two Saiyans coming yet. However, he's about to be told by Kami. And well, any plans of killing Goku and taking over the world, that's going to have to be put on hold, as he then decides to approach Goku, and the two agree to trade together to try and best this threat. And, um, there's a little condition to, to Piccolo's, uh, trading as well, and that is if the kid comes along too. Goku, that kid has shown signs that he's even more powerful than we are. We must get him trained. According to Kami, these next two Saiyans, they're stronger than your brother Raditz. And, well, Goku getting the opportunity to actually train his son 
teach him to fight. Yeah, it's been the opportunity he's been waiting for. So basically, one night, Goku and Gohan sneak out. And they join Piccolo, the same sort of wasteland area where he starts training. And it is training school for, well, for everyone. And um, Piccolo does make Goku leave his kid alone on the island in order to um, teach Gohan how to control his key and, yeah, all that stuff. And Goku doesn't like that one little bit. He, um, yeah, almost every time Gohan trips over or a dinosaur chases him, Goku wants to get involved and put a stop to this. Trust me, Goku, it's for the kid's own good. You've pampered him too much and for too long. We can't afford to go easy on him. Not with the world at stake. It's really not like you, Piccolo, to defend the planet. Please, I intend to do it myself someday. But right now these sands are in the way. And well, word has reached the rest of the Dragon Team, who of course beginning their own training up on the lookout. And um, one day, just about a couple of months later, um, they've decided to bring Gohan back into the fold and start training him properly. Picks up everything about the same pace, but they they get up to speed up the training and sparring and combat experience time, and well, fortunately, well or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, Raditz turns up as well. As Goku, Piccolo, and Gohan are all settled by a campfire, Goku's got a big fish on the fire, ready to sit down, and Raditz, well, he still has his scouter, he was able to, um, yeah, detect them, and now, they actually get into a bit of a skirmish with Raditz, you know, they still think of him as the the enemy, but he's actually come along to actually join them at his point. Yeah, he's not here to try, take Gohan away, or try to kill him before Vegeta and Nappa shows up. No, Raditz understands that no matter what he does at this point, yeah, N Nappa and Vegeta have had it with him. They're, they're going to get rid of him. His best chance of survival is if he could whip Goku, Piccolo, and his nephew in the shape. And during their little free man fight, Raditz can tell that Piccolo and Goku have already gotten a little bit stronger. <laughs> Not surprising for Goku, you know, Saiyan, Zenkai boosts. But Piccolo has also managed to raise his power a little bit in these two months. And he's even surprised that his um, nephew is starting to show signs that he's controlling his key in, you know, just over a couple of months. But Raditz is still able to turn the tables on him and pretty much has, the mo has all three of them, you know, on their butts sitting down. Listen! I'm not here to fight, okay? I'm here to help. If you think the way you're doing things right now that you have a chance against Nappa and Vegeta, you're in way over your head. 
Vegeta is 15 times stronger than I am. And Nappa, he's at least three times stronger than I am. If you really want to defeat them, you are going to need my help, whether you like it or not. Yeah, and how do we know we can trust you? How do we know you're just not going to turn on us the second they show up? I suppose you don't. Call on a leap of faith. However, Goku can sort of sense the goodness and sincerity of um, Raditz wanting to help them. Although he does understand this is more than likely to save his own skin. But, yeah, even Gohan, who was once scary again, I'm scared of um, his uncle and crying, takes Raditz by, by his hand and drags him to the campfire and sit with him. I can't, little kids, they can be wise sometimes. Piccolo still doesn't trust him one little bit. Huh. Fine, but I'll be keeping an eye on you the entire time. You step out of line, and I'll put you in the ground myself. Huh. I doubt you could do that, green man. And so... Raditz... Raditz, along with Goku, Piccolo, and his nephew Gohan, are ready to train together, get stronger together, and hopefully, together with their combined strength, they will overpower the threat that threatens to doom them all. And this is a good spot to leave things. So, what did you guys think? Did you like this part? I tried to keep it as far away from the Masako X version as possible by keeping Goku alive for one and um, keep, keeping King Kai and Yama and all, all that out of it, at least at this point. I just sort of feel that um, having King Kai, um, Goku and Snake Way and, and Kai Ken, it'd just be too convenient. If I had have um, killed Goku off, then yes, he could do all that. But I didn't want to make it too convenient this time. So anyway, as always, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And please check out the official site for um, more content, short stories, um, merchandise, of course. And you'd be doing a huge favor.